I love picking up little upgrades and cycle gadgets on AliExpress. So over the years, I have spent a lot of money on that platform. What? And here are five of those things that I've personally bought and can definitely recommend. My name, as always, is Luke, and welcome back to Trace Velo. Hello there. Now, for years and years, whenever I went out for a, a bike ride, I would take this hand pump with me in case I got a flat out and about. But some hand pumps can be quite bulky and they're certainly not the quickest things in the world to uh, inflate a tire with. So a little while back, I picked up this tiny CO2 pump here for nine quid. The body is completely aluminium, no plastic parts here. It takes threaded CO2 cartridges, either 16 or 25 grams, and screws into both Schrader or Presta valves. It comes with three neoprene covers for the cartridges because, uh, yeah, they, they get really chilly when discharging air, and you can easily control the inflation with this lever. Okay, let's do a very quick weight comparison here to my basic hand pump, but to be honest, as you can see, yeah, there's not much in it, especially when you factor in having to carry additional cartridges with you, but it is smaller and much more convenient. Now, some CO2 pumps, like this muck-off one, are controlled with a button on the back, but I've heard they can be quite difficult to sort of finely control the speed of inflation. But with this lever, you can precisely control the airflow in case you just need to top up your tire a bit while you're out on a ride. So let's, um, let, let's, let's try it out, shall we? Right then, this is my bike mounted to the wall. And this tire, this tubeless one here, is completely flat. I've let all the air out, so let's pump it up. Okay, right, let's get this uh, screwed on here, like so. And... Voila. Yeah, sorted. Now, very quickly, uh, some of you, if you're a high IQ divergent thinker, such as myself. You might be thinking to yourself, how good are the seals on this thing? So if I screw in a canister and leave it in my pocket, will it lose air? Well, I shot this video a couple of days ago. Okay, so this particular canister has been in here for about six weeks by this point. So let's see if it's still got air. Yeah, so it's it, there's, there's loads of air in there and I've had canisters in for much longer than that and I've come to fill up a flat and they've been absolutely fine. So as far as I'm concerned, these don't leak air at all. So yeah, all in all, this thing is a great little gadget. And as with all this stuff, I'll put links in the video description in case you wanna check them out. Now, if you've not done it before, cycling with a heart rate monitor is incredibly useful. I've done it consistently now for the last four or five months, and in some ways, I see it a bit like a poor man's power meter. Essentially, after a couple of rides, you can tell the amount of effort that you're putting in and how sustainable that is for you by looking at your heart rate. So this is a ride that I did recently synced with my IGS. 630 uh, cycle computer, which I covered in the last installment of this series, actually. And you can see it's broken down my heart rate into zones one to five, one being a warm up, five being an absolute max effort, so like a full out sprint. This particular ride, I went out and absolutely smashed it. So most of the ride, my heart rate was in zone four or five, but I know if I'm cruising along and my heart rate is 130, 140, I can keep that up for a pretty long time. But if I stray into the 150s or 160s, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to keep that up mile after mile. Now, admittedly, a power meter will provide a real-time measurement of your output in watts, so enable a much more granular view of your performance, literally pedal stroke by pedal stroke. But for me, a heart rate monitor has been a great way to get some more data out of my rides for, for absolute peanuts. I mean, this Magine H64 cost me 15 quid. It's super comfortable. I forget I'm wearing it. The battery lasts a thousand hours and it syncs flawlessly with my head unit, be that Garmin, Wahoo, or my IGS 630. Now, there was a small issue with it. Out of the box, this battery, which comes included, it wasn't reliably making contact with this gold connector. So I actually had to bend it out ever so slightly so it, so it made contact. And you might be able to see that here. It's been perfect since, and I suspect you probably won't have to you know, do this. But in case you face the same issue, yeah, easy fix. But anyway, great bit of kit, this thing. I've not actually used a heart rate monitor for training on my bike until I picked this up earlier this year, and it's genuinely surprised me 
how useful this thing is. So if you've not used one before and you want to get a bit more data out of your training rides but can't, can't justify the cost of a power meter, definitely recommend one of these things. Now, I've tried a lot of cheaper saddles over the years. Most of them have been carbon, <laughs> actually. And this one here is easily one of the best ones I've ever tried. And it's 3D printed. And in case you didn't know, as a, as a sort of cost-cutting measure, most other saddles are only printed in two dimensions. Ha 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 ha! Boom! So, I bought this last year, at the time, cost me 90 quid. You can now pick it up for 55, and it weighs 165 grams, which is pretty freaking good considering how robust the construction is. The saddle body and the oval 7x9 saddle rails are made of carbon, and the top is this honeycomb lattice of rubber. I was initially concerned the rubber would be quite delicate and maybe wear away or tear super easily. But no, must have ridden this about three and a half thousand kilometers, and it still looks brand new, really. No collapsing of the rubber on the pressure points or anything like that, and it's, yeah, still nice and springy. Now, obviously, saddle comfort is subjective. Everyone's juicy buttocks are, <laughs> are a bit different, but the relief channel is nice and wide. You can comfortably perch on the front when you're getting the power down in a bit of a TT pose, and the rear is nice and squishy when you just want to cruise along. Now, some of the cheaper carbon saddles that I've had in the past have been pretty flimsy, to be honest, and ended up cracking, or maybe the saddle rails have come loose from the body after a few thousand miles. But this one has been really sturdy, actually. So yeah, all in all, it's lightweight, comfortable, well-built, definitely one to consider. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. So the summer is well underway. It is hot, ladies and gentlemen, and luckily today's sponsor, Sirocco, have me covered. So I'm normally wearing all black when I'm out on the bike, but I got this white jersey on a bit of a whim a couple weeks back, to, <laughs> to be honest with you, but I absolutely love it. It's from their SRX Pro line, so the fabric is super lightweight and breathable, and I just think it looks fantastic, especially with these white bib short straps underneath and paired with these white cycle gloves here. Plus the construction is top tier and the pockets at the back easily hold all your stuff. And because it's white, it also reflects more of the light. So it'll keep you a little bit cooler on a really hot sunny day. They've also got loads of bib shorts to choose from. These basic Aspen ones have been great. Really nice padding and super comfortable. If you've got a bit more cash to, to kind of splash around, their BX line are awesome as well. A little bit of extra cushion in the padding and the construction is a bit more plush as well. And found this the other day, hidden pocket in the back. So yeah, if you want to grab some stuff, use my link in the description down below. Helps me out a little bit around here and it also gets you 10% off the entire site, which is a... Uh, Cool. Uh, anyway, thank you for listening and let's get back to it. So in the last installment of this series, I covered this bike light here with the rather catchy name Nfitnix uh, Navi 800. Yeah, fantastic bike light actually, but loads of people in the comments suggested I check out this thing here. And it's not a kazoo, even though it, it does look like one. <laughs> It's the Towild BR800 bike light. It nicely focuses the light down onto the road ahead of you. The bike light itself is reversible and can be mounted on top or underneath the handlebars. USB-C charging, completely waterproof. Three levels of brightness with a max of 800 lumens. I normally ride at night at level two, so around 400 lumens. It can obviously flash as well. And the running times, yeah, pretty decent. I'll stick them on screen here for you so you can check them out. The difference, however, is that this one is cheaper, around half the price of the Navi 800 from last time. And while that one used proprietary batteries, this one from Towild uses standard 18650 battery cells. These are one of the most common rechargeable cells used worldwide, really. So readily and cheaply available if you want to pick up some spares, or maybe you're riding through the night and need to pack three or four batteries to hot swap out along the way. It comes in the box with a charging cable, a few different mounts, and a battery. The one shortcoming, if there is one, it uses a Garmin-style mount. So if any of this plastic snaps or breaks, yeah, there's not much you can do. But I've had this on the bike for two or three months, no problems at all so 
far. So this is pretty nitpicky, to be honest with you. Anyway, fantastic little light for the money. So thank you to the commenters on the last video for the suggestion. Baguette emojis for everyone. I don't know if you know this, ladies and gentlemen, but bottle cage screws are ridiculously heavy and overbuilt. Five grams for a pair, it's, it's crazy. Now two grams, that is a weight saving of 60%. We're not in marginal gains territory anymore. We're in a different fucking league. Okay, so this one, um, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit stupid really, but these aluminium bottle cage screws are a cheap, fun little upgrade. And if you're a massive loser, like me, you can, you can color match them to your brake calipers. A nice little cosmetic change that absolutely no one apart from you will ever notice or care about. But, but hey, if you like it and it makes you happy, who can put a price on that? I can, three pound 18 for 10. So yeah, these are arguably completely pointless and they do take about two months to be delivered, but they're cheap and I think it adds a little bit of panache to your bike. It's the bonus clip time. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. Right then, one last bonus product here, and it's, it's actually this. So it's a bicycle pump, actually. So everything else in this episode, I paid for myself, but this company, Cycle Plus, or is it Siki Plus? Um, yeah, they sent this thing over, so bear that in mind. I accepted it mainly because the premise of a battery powered bike pump this big just, just seemed so ridiculous, but it's actually pretty cool. So on a full charge, it'll fully inflate two 25C tires from flat to 80 PSI, or I think one tire to 100 PSI. It's got a decent aluminium chassis. It's really lightweight and compact, works on Presta or Schrader valves, and it'll fully charge in 20 minutes. So you could potentially charge it up at a cafe stop mid-ride, something like that. Now it is quite loud. <laughs> And it comes with a little silicon case because it can get quite hot after kind of extended periods. But it, it freaking works. And if you just need to top off a tire mid-ride, yeah, this thing's perfect. Plus, take one of these ball inflator needles, put it in the vise, chop the end off, put that behind the rubber seal in the pump, tighten down, and you have a tiny rechargeable air duster for the workshop. <laughs> So yeah, pretty funky little gadget, this thing actually. And it's funny, once you've got what essentially <laughs> amounts to a miniature air compressor in the workshop, you do find some interesting uses for it. So the other day I used it to push some hydraulic pistons out of a set of brake calipers. I'm not sure it's a recommended use by, <laughs> by the manufacturer, but it certainly worked. So as with everything else in the episode, link uh, for this down there in the description as well. Right, that's all we got time for in this episode. So subscribe if you like this kind of thing, hit the like button if you enjoyed what I've produced for you. And if you've got any questions or comments for me, do include a baguette emoji with the comment, although I will also accept a croissant. Oh, one more thing actually, the L2 ERX group set that loads of you have been asking me about, it's currently being held at customs, which is slightly frustrating, but it should be here in the next few days and I'll be doing like an unboxing and I've also got another full build with a new frame and stuff on the way. So get subscribed, loads on. Uh, right, see you next time, ciao.